Welcome back to Tying Tales. Flies we've got uh, in front of us today are inspired, or at least the name of them are inspired by the main character of this book, The Earth is Enough by Harry Middleton. It was originally published in 1989, but you can get it online in paperback form, and it's one of my favorite books. And so the main character of, of the book is uh, Starlight Creek. And so... I've been tying the fly on your left for years and years. It's a, what I call a Starlight Creek Emerger. Uh, I occasionally use it as a nymph, just put a bead on it and alter the proportions slightly. And so that's a Starlight Creek Nymph. And uh, they've done a really good job for me over the years. Here are the tools and materials you'll need for the Starlight Creek Emerger and Nymph. And here's the Starlight Creek Emerger. Leave just a little bit room back from the eye of the hook for the head. Tie in the done hen hackle with the concave side toward the bend of the hook. I consider this more of a wingless wet than a soft tackle. It's just my own personal nomenclature. It just doesn't have the features of the, of the usual soft tackle. Go ahead and cut the wire in the crotch of the scissors. You don't want to use the tips of your scissors to cut wire with. Doubles them. And then wind back to about the barb on the hook, or maybe in between the point and the barb. On this size 16 hook, I'm using four pheasant tail fibers. That's not a hard and fast number. I usually think four is pretty good. Now the ends are very, very fragile, so you'll want to trim them off just a bit. So tie them up at about the three quarters mark. and wrap forward. I like to put my index finger on top of that wrap because they are pretty fragile and they're a little bit springy too. So if you don't do something like that, they're gonna wanna come back off the hook. And tie those down. trim. Wrap the wire in the, the other direction. And helicopter it off. Usually works pretty well. Now you take your black mole and you want just a little bit on there. A little dubbing wax helps. Some people say you only should put your dubbing on uh, rolling to the right. I reject such dogma. That apparently works other ways too.
Go ahead and wind back through the, uh, the hackle, zigzag to keep it from wrapping down any of the barbules. And tie a nice head. Usually three is good enough. If you've got everything real tight, there's one that one stray little uh, barbule. So I'm gonna grab it with the tweezers and pop it off of there. There's your Starlight Creek Emerger. Okay, here's the beadhead version. The only real difference in the materials for the beadhead version is, of course, the bead, and then the hook has got a slightly longer shank, gives you a little bit more room to, uh, to account for the width of the bead. You want to tie this in directly behind the bead. The closer you can get to the bead, the better. You don't really want a gap between the tackle and the bead. And again, the wire. And go again about to the three quarters stage. And again, I'm using four strands of the pheasant tail. I know I could have wrapped the pheasant tail and the wire together. I just like the way it, it makes a more solid fly. Doesn't matter the, the extra wraps, really. And again, the wire wrapped in the opposite direction. That tends to bind things down a bit better. And helicopter the wire, I like to use that term. More the mole, the black mole.
and uh, wind your thread back through with a zigzag. It tends to tie down fewer of the barbules. And there's the nymph version of the Starlight Creek Emerger.